So I'm gonna, for the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna talk to you about from the initial call through the initial clinic visit. And as I go through this, I'm gonna hit upon the clinical examination as well as uh, on who is not a candidate. Now, um, Dr. Lee recruited me here uh, just about a year ago, last summer, and I took a couple of months off uh, to be with my family, and I found myself in my office almost every day. And um, uh, Maria, our all-star nurse in the clinic, said this to me one evening as I was leaving. And they had a lot of guesses of what I was doing in the clinic. Um, but this is what we were doing. And I say we, because the person standing right next to me is Kathy Shalou, the director of the Lymphedema Therapy Clinic. And together with her, we were spending that time making phone calls and building a team. Because we did not want to launch our program without a team in place. Because we knew once we started our program and we got out there that we have a team approach and we're gonna provide this level of care for lymphedema patients, this will get picked up internally by our uh, internal media and would then get out to Boston Magazine, CBS News, ABC News, and then we would come in one morning and find this. And this is actually what happened. There are, there's a huge need out there. There are a lot of patients with lymphedema, and there are a lot of patients we can help with lymphatic surgery, and there are a lot of patients we can't. And so having a plan from that initial phone call I think is really important. Otherwise, you run the risk of this. You run the risk of having a clinic, a waiting room full of patients potentially you can help. And it leads to their frustration and, and yours as well. And so this is the actual email I sent out to the clinic uh, last October, uh, right before really we kicked off our uh, clinical program. And I'll just go through um, kind of our protocol of what happens. So there's nine questions patients get asked if they call the clinic and they say they want to be seen in our lymphatic surgery clinic. The first four questions, pretty standard. We just want to know who they, who they are and uh, know how we can get in touch with them. Height and weight. Now you've heard this twice already. It's a critical point. So we do calculate their BMIs before they even get to clinic. And if their BMI is over 40, we will not see them in the clinic because we know there's good data out of right here, the Beth Israel, showing that there's diffuse lymphatic dysfunction. We will, will refer these patients to our bariatric service. As Dr. Slavin already mentioned, we know these patients will get better um, with weight loss. Do you have lymphedema? We ask that question on the phone uh, for a few reasons. One of the reasons is we have a program in the prevention of lymphedema. So if a patient calls and they want to be seen in our clinic, but they don't have lymphedema, we're quickly figuring out on the phone, do they have an acute cancer with metastatic disease to a lymph node? And they're being referred to us because lymph nodes are gonna be removed and the surgical oncologist wants us involved uh, immediately at that time. And then they get prioritized into clinic. The next three questions are really uh, questions that are very open-ended and we're trying to learn from the patient essentially is, is this more likely a systemic problem or a localized problem. As surgeons, we can usually deal with problems that we can identify, like lymph nodes were removed, I received radiation, and then I developed lymphedema, uh, versus right-sided heart failure, and you know both of my lower extremities are swollen. And those three questions really are reviewed by our nursing team. This is Serena Skiffington, who's our all-star nurse practitioner, who will review these questions, call patients back, and then if they, they're, they're not deemed adequate for our clinic, we'll try to refer them to where we think they're best served. This is the actual intake form over the next few slides, and Dr. Chang already went over a lot of the questions. I'll just show you how we think about it. Um, right off the bat, if it's a chronic lymphedema patient, we wanna know if it's cancer-related or not cancer-related, because it leads to a different slew of questions. If it's not cancer-related, we wanna know about filariasis exposure, and other things. If it's cancer related, we quickly get into you know, radiation, chemo, hormonal therapy. We have a page and a quarter dedicated 
to just how does the lymphedema affect the patient? And we want to know anatomically how it affects them, but we really focus in on their symptoms. And we do this because uh, for me in my hands, a lot of the functional lymphatic surgery, uh, this is where we can actually make uh, good effect and good headway. As Dr. Chang mentioned, timing is very important. So we, may, we really understand the time course of the development of their lymphedema. And as many of you in the audience know, uh, from the therapy side, I call you uh, if you've referred a patient to us because the patient identifies you as their primary provider and I want to talk to you. I want to know, has the patient been compliant? What has their response been to their therapy? Uh, so we can talk about it at our Monday conference and formulate a plan. And the most important questions really come when we ask them what activities are limited uh, because of their lymphedema. And we actually give them a functional score. And uh, we, the single most important question we ask them is what's their goal? Why are they here to see us? If they come to see us for the magic pixie dust, I know that I've got an hour and a half consult ahead of me where I have to explain to them I don't have it. But if they come in, the more targeted they are with their goals, I want my heaviness to get better and my throbbing, those are patients that I really feel, okay, now we can start working on uh, achieving those very specific goals. Past medical history, past surgical history, past medical, we're looking for people who are not candidates for surgery. Do they have more of a systemic problem, heart disease, liver disease, renal disease? And then in the surgical history, as Dr. Chang mentioned, we want to know if they've undergone prior venous procedures uh, and lymphatic procedures, not only prior lymph node transplants or LV bypasses, but lymph node removals. Uh, for medications, we want to make sure they're not on any medications that might be causing lymphedema. Already this past year, we've picked up on two patients who were started on amlodipine and developed uh, lymphedema and family history, uh, especially if uh, we don't have a cause. So a clinical exam, just to be very frank, has somewhat of a limited utility for me, um, unless they're on one extreme or the other. If they're elephantiasis or they really have minimal lymphedema. But you know, we start with inspection, comparing the two extremities. Um, we will look for skin changes, such as hyperkeratosis. We'll also look for skin changes that might indicate another process, such as a, ven a venous disorder and stasis dermatitis. We'll palpate, we'll be feeling for edema and whether or not it's pitting edema. For historical reasons, we do document a stemmer's test. Of course, we examine uh, the vascular supply to the entire extremity and we're examining for potential donor sites. Our go-to donor site right now is the omentum. So we're looking at the abdomen. If it's a lower extremity lymphedema, our backup is the supraclavicular flap, so we're checking that area. And if it's uh, upper extremity, uh, our backup is the groin flap. All right, so um, this is my son. And uh, a few weeks ago, he was up at a fall foliage festival and he was very proud of his train on his arm. And uh, I've never talked to him about lymphedema, but this is actually, after I'm done with a clinical exam, this is how all my patients are counseled on lymphedema. So I tell them we're gonna talk about four things. What is lymphedema? Standard of care, what we're doing at BI, and then we put their story together for them. So for lymphedema, I said, imagine your heart's the biggest train station in the world. And every morning a big red train leaves and it's full of passengers and it goes to every part of the body and let's just focus on the train going to the left upper extremity. It leaves the station in the morning full of passengers and makes its way down. And by the time it hits the end of the line, all the passengers are off the train. Five o'clock whistle hits, everyone wants to come home. There's two trains that come home. There's a blue train and a yellow train. Both trains have to work and they have to be on time for all the passengers to have a seat and to get home. Five o'clock whistle hits, Everyone gets home, everyone's happy. I think the analogy doesn't need too much of an introduction to this group. We're talking about arteries, veins, and lymphatics. And then I say, well, let's focus. It's five o'clock, that yellow train's making its way home, and the train comes off the track. And we'll talk later about what causes the train to come off the track. But you get stranded passengers. And you might not even know you have stranded passengers, as Dr. Chang was referring. They said they bumped their elbow and they developed lymphedema. Well, not so much. They probably had some stranded passengers. 
But when those passengers don't get home day after day after day, they might do this. And that's your passengers riding, and those are your symptoms. And so then I say, well, let's talk about the standard of care, which is physical and occupational therapy. And I liken that to saying, OK, your yellow train's not working, and you're going to put some people behind it, and you're going to push it up the track. Please don't think in any way I'm trying to minimize what therapy does. But this is physically what you're trying to do. And I say it's very effective. At the same time, it is lifelong. And um, it can be onerous at times. And it is not a cure. And neither is surgery. But when we talk about surgery, sticking to our trend analogy, I say let's look at surgery in two ways. There's excisional procedures and physiologic procedures. And I say let's go back to our train analogy. Excisional procedures are where we take these passengers and we do this to them. We hose them down and get rid of them. What's the problem? The other trains are still running. So by no means is this a cure. The, you will require um, compression, and you might even require more compression if you were to undergo, for example, liposuction. Physiologic procedures are where we're trying to get the train back on track, and that's where we trick the yellow train to get home via the blue train track system. So we go in. If there are yellow train tracks left, then we'll reroute them into a venous system. And a lymph node transfer is where we build you a brand new yellow train. And that will also build you some new yellow train tracks. And finally, I end by putting it together. I go over their story. And I really try to match their goals, which are their expectations, with what can we realistically uh, deliver in the OR. And it's really important to put those together. All patients, we run our lymphedema therapy clinic in concert with our surgery clinic. All patients get measurements. They get um, um, a standard measurements, bioimpedance, pyrometry. We have an experimental device that actually uh, looks at skin tonicity and quality of life. Thank you very much.